If you want to learn how to make a fresh tagliatelle, then keep watching. And if you want to learn other Italian recipes, then subscribe and turn on notifications. Today we're just gonna use egg yolk and full, like whole egg. Obviously, if you don't want to put too many eggs, uh, then you can just take them out and just put water. So I'll make a recipe for that too. That way you can also have your pasta without eggs. So for today, the ingredients that we're going to use is semolino flour, just the regular flour in Italy. It's zero, zero flour. And then we're going to have, as I said, eggs. No salt, no oil, no nothing. So hard wheat actually has more proteins and more gluten, it gives bite to the pasta and soft wheat makes it more elastic. So that's why when we're making pasta, we actually use a mixture of both. So in the case of pasta that is opposite to the case of gnocchi, we actually want the gluten mesh to form. So the gluten mesh is something that starts to form when the gluten inside the flour starts to actually elongate and become kind of like a um, web. That is what gives structure to your pasta, for example, or bread or anything. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to break a few eggs. I think that one and a half yolk should do it. It kind of depends on the size of your eggs. But so I'm going to wait the egg yolk. Now, what we're going to need is actually the rest of the egg. So we're just going to mix up some eggs in here, weigh them, and that's how we have a mixed egg. So now that we weighed our eggs and our flowers, I already mixed the flowers together. I'm going to make a little hole in the center. I'm sure you've seen this before. <laughs> and then we're going to add the egg, whoop, and our two little dogs. Now we're going to start to mix with a fork. I have already cleaned my table to be ready to knead. So kneading pasta, it's actually pretty hard, I would say. It is a good workout, very good workout. But, you know, since we're not making huge amounts of it, it's okay. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and start mixing from the center and kind of go around and start to put the flour in the middle. Okay, so here I have my chicken, chicken? kitchen tarot. So this is actually pretty useful. There is also like plastic ones that I think are bit, they're pretty cheap. If you're into baking and stuff, this is a really good thing to have. Okay, so now that the dough looks kind of like this, we can start with our hands inside the bowl. This, what you can do is actually take it and push it on top. That way. So when kneading, keep one hand behind, kind of pinching it, keeping it from moving away. And then you have to kind of roll it like this and push towards the front. Keep it there, push towards the front. And then you can spin it and do the same on the other side. It is starting to really get pretty hard. The gluten is starting to form. You can really feel it getting stronger. <laughs> so if you're strong, good. I wish. Oh, I forgot to say that if you have the machine that does it, you can use that one. I just wanted to show you how to make it by hand. That way, if you don't have it, I got you. ready. So when it comes out like this, it means that it has the structure needed. How beautiful is that? Enough. <laughs> oh, they look like a face. Sweet. Okay, so now that it's ready, we can actually put it in the fridge. Or at least 15, 15, 20 minutes. So now that our pasta has rested, we can actually start to make the pasta sheets. So I just wanted to tell you that with this pasta, you can actually leave it in the fridge for long, for like two, max three days. I'm going to show you the machine that I'm going to use. One of these, just with this 
thing that makes the sheets. It's actually, uh, I think, $30. This attachment right here that has different kinds of cuts, see? For tagliatelle and tagliolini is another $30, uh, if I'm not wrong. So this is definitely something that you really need because, you know, or else you're gonna have to do it by hand. Uh, and this one though, it's not, you know, that necessary. So today I want to show you how to make tagliatelle by hand. That way you don't need this. Woo! So first things first, I'm going to have to get this stable on the table. I'm going to show you how to make different sizes. So we are gonna make tagliarin, which is the thinnest one. Tagliarin is actually from Piedmont. It has a lot of eggs in it. So it's only, it has a lot of yolk. So this is not the exact recipe. This machine actually has four, five, six different sizes. I usually just stop at the, um, not the last, the one before. But that is something that you really need to choose. Apart from the fact that every machine has obviously different sizes, uh, but you really need to see how you like the pasta. You can actually let it dry a little bit on the table. First of all, we're going to choose the size. Take anything that you like, I'll use my knife. So half would be right here. Let's remember that we will get to the half of the handle, for example. To store them, you can actually put them like this. This is just a clean cloth. Wrap them really nicely, just so that the air doesn't get in, and put them in the fridge. Bene. First of all, put a good amount of semolina on top so that the pasta doesn't stick. Then we're going to fold it a few times on both sides. It doesn't really matter how many times you do it. And then we're actually going to start cutting it. So as I said before, I'm going to make tagliatelle first, but you can cut it as thick or thin as you want and, you know, make your own favorite. It's fairly easy, right? And look how pretty. Ta-da! <laughs> So now I'm making something in between tagliatelle and tagliolini, which is called fettuccine. Also, you can even make them bigger than tagliatelle. And then those are what is called pappardelle. So the last kind I'm going to show you is the tagliarin, as I said. So again, same exact thing. But this time we need to go really thin. So pretty. All right. This same exact recipe can actually be used for lasagna. I will put a link to the video that I made so you can go check it out and see how to make lasagna, buone lasagna. So I just wanted to show you, I kept these overnight in the fridge. So as you can see, the color is still pretty good. They didn't get stuck to each other. And so yeah, I just put it on this plate, cover that with the plastic wrap, and yeah, that's it. Okay, so the water is boiling, we can put our pasta in. When cooking homemade pasta, the cooking time will change depending on the size, you know? So the best thing to do is to taste it and see if it's ready. Let's see. Mm -hmm. mm, it's perfect. So we have to take it out just a few, just like a minute, not even before it's completely cooked. That way, while it, uh, we make the mantecatura, it can, you know, it continues cooking a bit. So we don't want it to get soft. So Okay, let's kill the fire. It is very important to turn the fire off when doing any kind of mantecatura. What I'm going to do first is add some butter that I cut up and rolled in flour. The cooler the butter is, the better. And then I'm adding some parmigiano. So now we can actually plate. To plate in that nice, beautiful, like, swirl, we need to use one of these, if you have some tweezers, like these ones. Just do like this and then it's as if you were eating them, okay? So some sauce, obviously, on the top. And if you like some pepper on top, just a bit. The last touch of parmigiano. 
Okay, I'm ready to eat and I thought, why not get some wine? If I can open this. All right, this is actually Barbera. Have you ever tried it? It's a very famous wine here. I really like it. I think it is one of my favorites. Chin chin. It's a bit early for wine. But we are in Italy. I'm going to destroy this. <laughs> Woo! Damn, they're huge, I love it. What a nice lunch. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the video and that you learned how to make beautiful different kinds of pasta. If you like this video, leave a like. And if you want to learn more Italian recipes, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And if you try this recipe out, then I would love to see it. So again, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.